Today on the newscast, U.S. airstrikes against Iran's allies in Syria as the Iran nuclear deal looms. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast and welcome to TBN's New York City studio. I am here today doing some filming for TBN with a very special guest. I can't reveal who it is yet, but you'll see him soon here on the newscast. And then I head to Dallas, Texas tomorrow to film at TBN studio there. I will be guest hosting the Center Point Show. Mark your calendars this Friday night, August 26th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Then again, it airs at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So a busy few days here in Watchman World with travel, but all good things lined up. In the meantime, we talk a lot here in the newscast, of course, about Israeli airstrikes in Syria. Well, yesterday, the U.S. carried out airstrikes against Iranian-backed militias in eastern Syria. And the Pentagon talked about this yesterday and revealed what went down. And Basically, the city of Deir Azur, which was an ISIS stronghold in years past, now the Iranian regime and its allies have moved in and set up shop there, in particular, Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps. Now, there have been U.S. airstrikes in this area a few times over the past few years, but the timing of yesterday's strikes is very interesting, of course, because a brand new revived version of the Iran nuclear deal is looming. More on that in a minute. Before I break down this airstrike, I just want to encourage you to subscribe to the Watchman Newscast right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Hey, we're coming to you every day, Monday through Friday, with breaking Middle East news and sometimes on the weekend, and we tie it all together and break down how it affects you no matter where you live, the Middle East never sleeps. We had another example of that yesterday with these strikes. Now, Iranian-backed militias in Deir Azur were targeted, reportedly some Afghan militias there. Now, remember, Iran has brought in foreign fighters, legions of Shia jihadis from Afghanistan, Pakistan and brought them into Syria and into the battlefields of the Middle East. Apparently, uh, this Iran-backed militia that was targeted yesterday by U.S. forces was uh, were Afghans. We'd I'd like to see more details on that, but those are the early indications. Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps was not directly targeted, key point there. And in the statement, the Pentagon Central Command said, uh, that the U.S. took great care to avoid civilian casualties, and they don't want to escalate, and the strikes were proportionate. Under the Biden administration, the Pentagon always seems to, whenever it acts against Iran or its allies, usually its allies, it always releases a statement saying, these were proportionate, these strikes, meaning we don't want to escalate, we don't want to make the Iranian regime mad, because then the Iran nuclear deal may fall apart. Well, unfortunately, that nuclear deal is doing anything but fall apart. It looks like, folks, we are days, weeks, perhaps even days away from an announcement that the U.S. and Europe, along with Russia and China, have agreed to a brand new Iran nuclear deal. I've described that nuclear deal as kind of a vampire or a zombie that won't die. And yes, after in previous months, we reported here in the newscast, that that deal was on life support. In recent weeks, there has been a surge driven by the European Union to revive the deal. And now the Biden administration is fully on board, it seems. And look, Joe Biden made clear from the time he took office in January 2021, even on the campaign trail before that, that he was looking to resuscitate that Iran nuclear deal. Well, we are there now. Uh, Iran has reportedly drop some of its key demands to doing a deal, which includes uh, their demand that Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps be removed from the U.S. terror blacklist. Iran is no longer pushing that, but apparently they are pushing uh, a supposed fine. The United States would pay a fine if it pulled out of this nuclear deal. It would be penalized, essentially. Now, remember, in 2018, President Trump pulled the U.S. out of that deal, rightly so, calling it one of the worst foreign policy disasters in American history. And he was correct. 
Iran doesn't want to see that happen again. Suppose the Biden administration agrees to this deal. Uh, 2024, say a Republican comes into office, scraps the deal again. Iran is trying to avoid that. That's why they want to write in a fine or a penalty if the U.S. would look to withdraw from the deal once again. Now, Israel's Prime Minister Yair Lapid uh, blasted the deal today. He said, look, it essentially rewards the Iranian regime with $100 billion per year in sanctions relief. Not sure the term of the deal, how long it will be yet, by the way, but what we do know is Iran will be uh, gift wrapped billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in sanctions relief. And Yair Lapid, the Israeli prime minister, made the point today, again, rightly so, that that money, that financial windfall that the Iranian regime will receive, it's not going to go to build schools or playgrounds or hospitals in Iran. It's going to go to the likes of Iran's terror proxies, Hamas, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, the Houthis, to destroy schools and playgrounds and hospitals in Israel and elsewhere. Lapid uh, made that point today. He also said, look, the West keeps setting red lines with Iran. Iran keeps crossing those red lines, and then the West just keeps offering new supposed red lines, and then Iran crosses those. Folks, the Iranian regime has been on the ropes for years now, back against the wall, economic struggles big time, severely hampered and affected by strong sanctions. You would think that the U.S., Europe have all the leverage, right? But instead, the Iranian regime is acting like it has all the leverage. It is strong arming this deal, and the West is backing up and giving Iran what it wants. What does Iran want? Clearly, sanctions relief and the ability to operate freely in the oil market and in other economic endeavors worldwide. They're going to get that. They're going to get hundreds of billions of dollars in their coffers that's going to be used to sponsor terror, to build ballistic missiles. Their support for terror, by the way, uh, the, the proxy groups, Hamas, Hezbollah, and the rest, that's not on the table as part of this deal. Nothing is on the table regarding Iran's sponsorship for terror. Nothing is on the table regarding Iran's continuing development of ballistic missiles? No. So you may ask yourself, what exactly does the United States get out of this deal? What does Europe get out of this deal? Good question. I don't have an answer for you. What they believe they're getting is, well, they believe they're buying time. They believe, look, uh, we can stave off a nuclear Iran for a few years and basically uh, stop it from being a headache for a few years. Isn't that what it boils down to, folks? This is kicking the can down the road, perhaps for the next leader to deal with. That's exactly what's happening right now. Because say this deal lasts for 10 years, Iran is very patient. When those 10 years are up, Iran can simply break out and develop the bomb in short order. So what Iran's going to do is, is wisely, I, I hate to say it, they're going to buy their time they're going to take the hundreds of billions of dollars in sanctions relief. They're going to continue to build up their proxies and develop ballistic missiles. And then when the sun sets on this deal, they can break out and they'll have the bomb. Again, kicking the can down the road and delaying the inevitable. Yesterday here in the newscast, if you missed it, you can check it out here in our archives. We broke down Iran's strategy for a future war against Israel. And again, that includes the proxies arming and building up the proxies. That takes time, and the Iran nuclear deal buys them the time that they need. As we close here, we know how Washington feels about it. We know how Brussels feels about it. They want a deal. It's appeasement at another level. How does Israel feel about it? You heard the statements by Yair Lapid, which I shared, but what will Israel do now? And by the way, those US airstrikes that we mentioned earlier, very, very significant that Iran itself, Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, were not targeted directly. Proxies, yes, but not Iran itself. The U.S. doesn't want to get its hands dirty in an engagement. This administration in Washington right now does not want to get its hands dirty in an engagement, a direct engagement with Iran, including over Iran's nuclear program. But Israel is a different story. I've said here many times on the newscast that there is no way, under no circumstances, Will Israel allow Iran to acquire the bomb? And I'm sticking to it. Israel, I believe, folks, eventually, when this deal goes through, and Israel has made clear, hey, we are not beholden. We're not a party to this deal. 
we don't have to abide by that deal. Uh, America, Europe, if you want to do it, great. But we don't have to abide by the deal. Benny Gantz, the Israeli defense minister, is in D.C. tomorrow lobbying Biden officials once again to not sign the deal. I think it's unfortunately going to fall on deaf ears. They are going to do the deal. But stay tuned, because Israel, again, is not a party to this deal. And under no circumstances will Israel allow Iran to acquire the bomb. It's an existential threat, and it's no coincidence that over the past several months, Israel has been training more and more on long-range bombing runs geared towards eliminating Iran's nuclear weapons program. Folks, we live in perilous times, no doubt, but these are also Bible times. So keep all of this in prayer. God is still on the throne, and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for wisdom for Israel's leaders right now, because it seems like they will be isolated here and essentially alone on an island encountering this Iran nuclear threat. Hey, thanks so much for joining us here today on the newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman newscast episodes every weekday.